Okay. Well, uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, I have to say that this is a joint work with Victor Peña, who is currently an assistant professor in the Universidad Politécnica de Catalunya. And uh, what motivated us to do this work was the uh, lack of uh, methods in the DP literature for differential for for a Bayesian hypothesis testing and model selection. So in this work, we uh, made two contributions in this direction, two topics that are closely, closely related, and we put a special emphasis in linear regression. <clears throat> in Bayesian hypothesis testing, well, we start with our statistical model as in frequencies, and then we entertain some uh, hypotheses. Here we have the, the null and alternative. And one quantity that we use to do hypothesis testing here is the base factor. The base factor looks like this a likelihood ratio, where this is a more like an average of the, of the, of the uh, likelihood we integrate out using the prior distribution that we have for each of the, of the hypotheses. And in this case, well, if the base factor is large, that is evidence in favor of, against the null, and if it's small, that's evidence uh, in favor of the, of, the, of the null hypothesis. And we also can define the base factor in the other way, like the base factor uh, zero one. Uh, associated with the base factor, we also have the posterior distribution. This is another quantity that is more intuitive that we can also use to uh, test this hypothesis. This is the, the, that would be like the posterior distribution from uh, the uh, of the uh, null hypothesis. And something that I want to notice here is that there is a one-to-one -one relation for any problem in Bayesian statistics between this base factor and the posterior distribution. So something that we wanted to do in this case, uh, it was to uh, do some research on how we can define a differentially private version of the uh, base factor. So something that we could be tempted to do in this case was probably using the, try to use the, the uh, Laplace mechanism or the Gaussian mechanism, but we have a problem because the uh, base factor is, the, the sensitivity in general is not bounded. So one possible option or something that we decided to do here was to uh, use a sensor version of this base factor. So if the base factor is too small, we make it equal to L. And if it's too large, we make it equal to U. And in this case, well, we achieve what we want. That is like a bounded sensitivity. However, the sensitivity is still too large. When the sensitivity is equal to the range of the interval, basically, uh, that's going to destroy the statistical usefulness if we want to use a privacy budget of equals one. So one possible option that we can use in this case to reduce the sensitivity is this method in differential privacy that is called subsample and aggregate. So in this case, what we are going to do is to divide the data set into M subsets, and then we are going to compute the base factor at each of these subsets. And then the next step is to aggregate them. And a common way to aggregate them is using the average. And if we use the average, uh, well, we get that the sensitivity is going to be n times smaller, where m is the size of the partition. However, we could ask this question, should we, should we aggregate with the average? Well, it turns out that the base factor has some properties. And if we, if we define some differentially private version of the base factor, we would also like to preserve the same properties that we have for the regular base factor. And one of them that is crucial is this one. The, pro, the, the base factor, when you compare the uh, alternative to the null should be equal to the inverse of the base factor when you compare the null to the, uh, to the uh, alternative. And of course, if we use the average here, this is something that we are not going to have. These two quantities are not going to be the same. And even if the noise that we need to add is eta to, re to, to achieve differential privacy, even if that noise goes to zero, we don't get that property. So for that reason, uh, after like, thinking a little bit more about, we uh, think that a good way to, uh, to combine base factor is using the geometric mean. The geometric mean here is basically adding noise. What we are doing is adding noise to the average of the log of the base factors. And in this case, well, we end up with a geometric mean and uh, the effect of the noise is multiplicative. And if we do that, then we can achieve a similar property to the one that we would like to have. It's not exactly equal, but it's equal in distribution. And in this particular case, if the noise goes to zero, then we get that these two quantities are the same. Now, in the context of linear models, uh, we consider a normal linear model of this type. And now we assume that uh, one of the hypotheses that we want to test 
is that a subset of the coefficients are exactly equal to zero. In this case, this is the expression of the base factor with no privacy. And if we compute the, if we consider here the, our, that would be like a noisy geometric mean of sensor base factors, uh, it turns out that we can use it and, and we can show under well, some conditions on, on the priors, on the way how we divide the data, uh, we can show that that particular differentially private version of the base factor is consistent. That was our first uh, contribution. Uh, the second contribution was more in the context of model selection, let's say also in the context of normal linear models. And in here, what we want to do is to uh, select uh, the predictors that we should include in the model. We can also call this model uh, variable selection. And in Bayesian statistics, we can think that we have some uh, binary parameters and uh, we denote those binary parameters by gamma. If that gamma for the given coefficient is equal to zero, that means that the coefficient is equal to zero. So these sequences of zero ones, they define specific models. And the ultimate goal in Bayesian statistics in model selection is to compute the posterior distribution for all these sequences. This is basically the posterior distribution on the, on the model space. And um, we can try to and, and notice that the um, posterior distribution, in this case, for all these models represented by the gamma, we can compute any we have access or we can, if we can compute all these base factors. This is the base factor of each model compared to a reference model that could be the null model, the model that only includes the, the, the intercept. And well, we already have a strategy that allowed us to compute the base factor using this geometric mean. But uh, well, if, it's, if the model space is too large, which is the case when P is relatively large, uh, then that's going to be a problem for the, if we try to use the previous methodology because that implies that we need to divide the privacy budget by, by basically two to the P minus one, and that's gonna destroy the statistical usefulness. So another option that we can also use here is to use a sufficient statistic of, the, of linear regression, that is uh, this matrix G here. And if we assume that the entries of G are bounded, then we can use different methods like uh, the Laplace uh, mechanism, the Gaussian, or even the, the Wisher mechanism in this, in this setup. Now, in this context, um, in order to account uh, for uncertainty, something that we can do is to apply a hard thresholding. And another aspect that we need to, to consider in this case is uh, that the noisy, ma the noisy matrix is, might, be no, 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 uh, might not be positive definite. And in that case, we need to, we can apply a regularization similar to the one that was proposed in this paper, where the idea is to add a diagonal matrix, and then we select R here, so that we can guarantee that the regularized noisy version of G uh, is positive definite with high probability. And well, if we want to study this in the context of uh, regression, well, we, uh, we have some results, some theoretical results that show that all the possible base factors that we can create comparing all possible pair of models, they are consistent. And that if we use like the, the regularized version of this uh, sufficient statistic. And in particular, what we are saying here is that the posterior distribution concentrate all the mass around the true model when the sample size uh, increases. So in this uh, work, uh, we also have an approach. This is, these approaches are easy to uh, implement using existing software. We have a trick that you can use to to, to implement this with this existing software. Uh, we also have some additional strategies for uncertainty uh, quantification. We also provide some numerical experimentation and illustrations to assess the performance of the method. And if, if, because the base factors uh, are very similar to these uh, uh, likelihood ratios, then we also have uh, similar results, but for likelihood ratios, that would be in, the, in a more uh, frequent setup. So, uh, this is the, the current version of the paper is here in archive. And of course, if you are interested, you are more than welcome to us or make any comments. I will be around all this week. Okay, thank you so much.